are talking about the lawyer turned author with 48 consecutive bestsellers. John Grisham is returning to one of his best known characters for a very long awaited sequel. Very long, yeah. I spoke to him last night about his career, about his new book, The Exchange, and he told me how its predecessor, The Firm, changed his life 30 years ago. It paved the way for future books. It allowed me to, uh, to stop being a lawyer. I changed professions, which was a big, big deal. I stopped being a lawyer and became a full-time writer. And the firm allowed me to do that overnight. And I, I closed my law office immediately. I didn't turn off the lights. I walked out, I said, I'm done, okay? I'm done being a lawyer and I can now write full-time. That was the big change in my life. You've written books every year since then. I mean, incredibly prolific. And yet it's taken 30 years, more than 30 years, to come up with the, the sequel to the firm, The Exchange, uh, which is out now. Why, why did it take so long? It all goes back to the story. You, ha you have to wait till there's a story. I, I cannot sit down and just force a story to happen. I can create some stories, but most of them don't work. I have to be inspired by something I see or hear or or read about to be inspired to write the novel. And I'll, I'll take something I, I hear about or read and, and change a few facts and change some characters. And before you know it, you've got a story. It, it, in, in, in the meantime, there were so many other books to write. I kept thinking about Mitch and how much fun it would be to bring him back. I had no idea it would take so long. Of course, it was Tom Cruise who famously played Mitch in the movie of The Firm. The lawyers at your firm sure seem accident prone. Four dead lawyers out of 41 in less than 10 years. I think you've got a serious problem. He made the sequel to Top Gun recently. Do you think he will step in and, and play Mitch in the, in the sequel to The Firm? Is, is this another movie in the making? Well, I hope so. Uh, it's not in the works yet. I hope Tom, uh, if, if, if Tom wants to do it, it's going to be done. If he doesn't want to do it, it probably won't be done. But when Tom came out last year with uh, Maverick, which was the sequel to Top Gun, in a really fun movie, uh, he did a great job. He still looks 30 years old. I don't know how these Hollywood people do that, but he doesn't age. Uh, and I, we, we would have some fun conversations between my agent and my wife and, you know, just casual conversation about uh, what would a sequel look like for the firm if Tom did it? And that was about the time I got the story for the the exchange and started writing the book. So yeah, that was always a factor because people remember the firm, the book, but you know, movies are much bigger than books. Talking of movies, of course, there's been a big writer's strike in Hollywood recently that's had a lot of coverage over here as well. And I know that was partly about the use of artificial intelligence and you as a writer also have, have real concerns about AI. How much of a threat do you think it is to, to writers like you? I'm not sure the threat can be uh truly appreciated or gauged or explained or predicted. We do know, we filed suit a month ago. Uh, a, a, bunch of law, a bunch of writers uh, filed a lawsuit against uh, A1, open, open AI. So John Grisham, the writer of legal courtroom drama is now involved in a, in a real life legal drama of his own. A real plaintiff, yeah. Yeah, I'm suing people. For 30 years I've been sued by everybody else for uh, for, for slander, defamation, copyright, whatever. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's, I guess it's my turn to file suit. Of course, in the, in the months ahead, we're going to have Donald Trump in various courtrooms, um, uh, the kind of legal drama that you couldn't even have imagined in a novel. There's so much about Donald Trump that no one could ever have imagined. <laughs> that uh, uh, The idea that a former president is now... Um, involved in three criminal trials. Um, I'm not sure, no one can predict what's gonna happen. No one knows which trial will go first, which trial might affect his campaign, if he wins, which trial could affect or imperil his presidency. It's all new territory, none of it's pleasant uh, because, he, because he's such an unpleasant part of American history. What is it about the courtroom as an arena that, that draws you back to it time and time again. We live in a very violent society and there's a lot of crime, a lot, 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 of, um, lot of serious violent crime. And we expect to go to court and, uh, and get justice, and see the wrong people, the bad people punished. 
but we have an we have an addiction to uh, violence, guns, crime. That's it's, it's very much a part of our culture, and and that plays out in court. We we just love we love big sensational trials. From what you're saying, it sounds like you are more pessimistic about the American justice system, about the court system, than you were when you were a young lawyer and starting to write 30 years ago. I'm more pessimistic because um, for the past 15 years, I've, I've served on two boards uh, dedicated to exonerating innocent people who are in prison. I have come to realize over the years that there are thousands of innocent people in prison. They, they all go back to a bad verdict. They all go back to a bad, unanimous verdict, 12-0, where a jury of, of um, average people uh, believed everything the cops and prosecutors said, and the judge you know, was probably asleep, and, get, and, and delivered a bad verdict. Just look at the figures about your book sales. 48 consecutive number one bestsellers, 400 million copies sold around the world. I mean, do, does it get to a point where the critics, the official reviews, just don't matter anymore? Yeah, about 30 years ago. Uh, when, the, <laughs> when The Firm came out 30 years ago, uh, you know, the reviews were not, were generally bad. Uh, they hurt back then. I realized, look, when you, when you write popular fiction, you're not going to get good reviews from the, the literary types, and you, and you don't really want them. That was a long time ago. I've long since realized and believed that I've sold far too many books to worry about the critics. When you write fiction, you can aspire to win awards, uh, literary awards, or you can, you can hope for royalty checks. I like the royalty checks. <laughs> so is that what motivates you to keep going? Because I have to say, if I'd sold that many books, I think I'd probably just stay in bed every day. I wouldn't bother getting up and writing. I tried that. I tried. It didn't work, okay? Well, yeah, it doesn't work. You can't quit. You can't just goof off and the rest of your life. I'm, and there, there, are too, there are too many wonderful stories that I want to write about, serious stories about uh, serious issues, you know, wrongful convictions, death penalty, mass incarceration, environmental destruction, stuff I like to write about. Uh, those are serious novels in the, in the context of a legal thriller. But also they're just books like The Exchange, like The Firm, just good old-fashioned suspense, entertainment, mystery, thriller. Those are still a whole lot of fun to write. So I, I hope I got a few more of those left. I think he has. He's I think not he's probably stop. got loads more he's books. They're going to keep on coming. And <laughs> um, that's the latest, The Exchange by John Grisham, out today.